Summer 2024 was marked by the Blake Lively craze, but not in a good way. While she was hoping to get an Oscar nomination for her role in the hit movie It Ends With Us, the public had different plans for her. And now it seems like it is Anne Hathaway's turn to get public justice for her past behavior. Or is she yet another victim of an unfair witch hunt? Let's dive in. Journalist Kirsty Flaw recently revisited her uncomfortable interview with Anne Hathaway, which she posted on YouTube. And we all know that when Kirsty releases an old interview, it means that a celebrity is about to be exposed for their behavior. I mean, you all remember this video of Blake that started the entire craze, right? First of all, congrats on your little bump. Um, congrats on your little bump. <laughs> <laughs> what about my bump? <laughs> This time, the case at our hands is objectively not that bad. However, it is still not a good look for Anne, that's for sure. Do you feel that love was more passionate back then? Or people would sacrifice more for love than we do today? No. No? No. Do you remember your first crush? Um, no. You don't? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. As you can see, the interaction had been brief and awkward, with Anne giving short, blunt responses to questions. Kirsty clearly had tried to lighten the mood by jokingly suggesting Anne seeing her answers, but the actress declined, responding curtly to other questions as well. As we can all expect, Kirsty was disappointed in the interview, feeling like her efforts were in vain. And no one would like to feel like this, right? I wouldn't want to feel like that, that's for sure. Apparently, people on social media were also thinking like me as they ran to support Kirsty and criticize Anne for her questionable attitude. Did you find Anne's responses rude or do you think she was just having a bad day? The thing is, this is not the first time we see Anne's mean side. Back in May, in a resurfaced clip, Anne was seen laughing off a journalist's request to share details of a conversation with Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Wintour. When asked if she and Wintour had ever spoken about The Devil Wears Prada, Anne confirmed they had, but when the reporter pressed for more info, Anne replied, why would I tell you, and laughed. The journalist responded by saying, because I'm a fan and I need to know, to which Anne pointed out, no, but you weren't there. Have you guys ever spoken about the movie? From the Yes. And what has she shared? Why would I tell you? Though the interviewer acknowledged and respected Anne's decision, some people on social media found Anne's reaction rude or passive aggressive. I'm on Anne's defense on this one, since I believe it was questionable to ask for someone's private conversation. Could she have expressed herself a bit more kindly, or does she have the right to set boundaries the way she wants? If you didn't know, the internet has a long history of hating Anne. I know she seems like people's sweetheart, but in reality, a lot of people have been disliking her for the longest time. In fact, they hate her so much that there is even a specific term for hate against her called have a hate. Everything started when in the 2010s, people decided that she was simply too perfect. Anne was often criticized for being overly polished or rehearsed in her public appearances. Her enthusiastic acceptance speeches, particularly during the 2013 award season, were seen by some as insincere or over the top. For example, her It Came True line during her Oscar acceptance speech was seen as overly theatrical. This led to a perception that Anne was trying too hard to please everyone, which rubbed people the wrong way. Plus, it seems like Anne's heavy campaigning during the lead up to the Oscars also contributed to some of the backlash. Some people felt she was actively working the award circuit too aggressively, leading to Oscar fatigue. Her constant presence and media coverage during this period led to overexposure. And people have had enough of her. Do you think we saw her too much at the time? Were you a part of the half the hate crowd? Or do you think the entire saga was unfair and even somewhat misogynistic? Let me know in the comments below. That being said, until Kirsty's video, it seems like in more recent years, public sentiment toward Anne has softened. Could Kirsty's video trigger another wave of backlash against the actress though? Well, the internet seems divided on this too. Some believe that since Anne has been in the sector for a very long time, it is understandable that she is overwhelmed with interviews and constant questions at times. Also, just like any of us, she is allowed to have a bad day at times and act accordingly. Others, however, believe that while her experience in the sector should have matured her, the exact opposite has happened. Instead of maturing and becoming more professional, she simply got egoistic and narcissism took over her identity. 
which side are you on? Before making your final decision on her though, you might want to hear that Anne actually reached out to Kirsty and expressed her apologies to her, which is something Blake is yet to do to this day. Yesterday, I did receive an email. It was from Anne Hathaway's publicist and he forwarded a message to me from Anne Hathaway. In a video, Kirsty shared how Anne reached out to her with a touching and personal email, expressing regret for how the interview went. I have to say, I was pretty shocked. I had not expected her to reach out to me at all. I uh, thought she was never gonna even see that uh, video, uh, but she did. And she did something pretty amazing. Kirsty was moved by the gesture, admitting it made her almost teary-eyed. A long email explaining to me what she was going through right then when she did this interview. And she apologized for being giving me an awful interview, basically. While the details of the email remain private, Kirsty emphasized how grateful she was for the apology and shared that Hathaway invited her for another interview to promote her upcoming movie. Kirsty thanked Anne Hathaway for owning up to her mistakes, stating, I have so much respect for people who say they're sorry. Sorry is such a powerful word. <laughs> this is so amazing. So thank you really from the bottom of my heart for saying that you're sorry. And it's a long time ago now. I have no hard feelings about it. And, um, you know, I think this is kind of the message that I've been trying to like put forward in these videos that I've been making, you know, that we have to be nice and polite to each other. I mean, can you imagine Blake apologizing to Kirsty within the week that she shared that infamous video? She could have avoided all that backlash that she received the entire summer. Honestly, I'm glad Anne took such an important step and made up with Kirsty because Kirsty is completely right. Sorry is a very powerful word. But there are also people who believe Kirsty is at fault and that Anne did nothing wrong. The critiques against Kirsty usually go in two ways. One perspective is that she has been trying to gain clout by putting all these celebrity interviews on YouTube after realizing that the whole Blake Lively incident made her a bit famous. It is true that she has been uploading one interview after another with exaggerated titles to her YouTube channel. With the Anne interview, could she have been trying to gain more attention? The other perspective is more about Kirsty's interview style. A few journalists themselves said that Kirsty's interview style doesn't really leave much room for long answers as she asks questions that can be answered with either a yes or no. Some even find her questions awkward or unprofessional, unfit to ask a celebrity. I'm curious to find out if your opinion on Kirsty changed since the Blake Lively drama. Now, back to the other party. The thing is, Anne has been very open about how the Hatha hate craze impacted her mental health and career over the years. The backlash against Anne was so brutal that it led her to take a year-long break from the spotlight. When she returned in 2014, she shared this with the Huffington Post, my impression is that people needed a break from me. Later that year, she opened up to Harper's Bazaar about how the public's negativity impacted her career, stating, I had directors say to me, I think you're great, you're perfect for this role, but I don't know how audiences will accept you because of all this stuff, this baggage. She described the experience of being hated online as feeling punched in the gut. However, Anne also expressed how this tough period made her more compassionate, insisting she doesn't feel sorry for herself. Reflecting on her experiences during a speech at Elle's Women in Hollywood event, she said, 10 years ago, I was given an opportunity to look at the language of hatred from a new perspective. She emphasized her determination to no longer engage with negativity, stating I would no longer create art from this place. Now, this might be the reason why she was so quick to apologize to Kirsty. She might have felt genuinely upset that at the time she embraced such a rude attitude. However, some argue that the reason why she acted so swiftly in her response is the fact that she doesn't want to go through the half the hate craze all over again and become the next Blake Lively. And honestly, even though I can't see why people find this problematic, I can totally understand why someone would apologize to avoid further hatred. After all, her career was just returning to its glorious days with that age gap romance movie on Amazon Prime and the new Princess Diaries movie on its way. But let me know how you interpret her apology. If you want to see all the details about the Blake Lively drama in a single video, watch this one.